What's up everybody, Nightcoke the Fox here, and I am here today to tell you about my experience at Sabaton Con here in Phoenix, Arizona. I asked you guys if you'd be interested in like a vlog of some sorts, kind of like regaling you with the tales of my experience, and you guys seemed interested, so here we are. It's not going to be like a montage quite like I used to do when I used to go to conventions, mostly because I only went for one day and I was very busy so I didn't have a lot of time to get good footage, and it would have been a really short montage anyway because I only went for one day. Um, so this is going to be more like a vlog where I kind of talk about things, and I'm also going to show you some footage that we did get um, during the day. Also, please um, excuse the crackle in my voice. My voice is still partially gone because when you're at a convention, you kind of have to yell to be heard in your group, especially if you're wearing this <laughs> and you have layers of foam in front of your mouth. So, um, yeah, I kind of lost my voice a little bit, but that's okay. We're getting it back now. I just might sound a little bit raspy, but that's okay. It's fine. But anyway, overall, I'd say that the convention was a success. It was really fun. It was a little overwhelming too, because it had been a while, obviously, since any of us had gone to a convention. So it was a lot of people, surprisingly, which made me a little bit nervous, but at least from what I could see, the majority of the people were adhering to the mask mandate that the convention staff had put in place, except for people who worked there. That morning was a little bit chaotic, but it was good because, you know, we got everything done that we needed to get done. Um, but we get to the convention, right? And there's this long line, long, long line for people to get badges. But the reason for it was because the night before the convention started on Friday, the entire website for, this, for the convention just went down. The servers were down, everything was down, you couldn't look at the programming, you couldn't look at badges to buy, you couldn't see anything. So even at the convention, the screens in the hotel were off. There was nowhere in the convention that really, like, efficiently displayed their programming, like what panels were happening, where things were, like where to go for what, and they didn't have printed pamphlets or booklets to hand out that year either. So you were just kind of wandering around like a lost dog. <laughs> but whatever, we like the chaos, it's great. The line was like Disneyland. It like wrapped back and forth inside of the lobby, then it went outside of the hotel, wrapped around the back of the building. And this is an entire hotel, by the way. It's the Sheraton Hotel in Phoenix. So pretty big building, right? The line wraps all the way to the back for like half a block. And these people are just standing there waiting to get their tickets. Now my parents get in line because we have a few friends that are coming that aren't panelists, so they didn't get to go to the little secret booth in the back where we kind of just get our badges for free because we're a part of the volunteer programming. But if you're just buying a badge, you have to get in the nightmare line. So my parents get in that line and they're waiting. They wait for quite a long time because that line is really, really long. And then they finally get up to the front just to be told, hey, cash only systems down so we also can't take card. And this had happened to many other people as well because they were directed to an ATM, my parents were. They go to the ATM, all of them are out of order because they're out of money, because other people had been told to do the same thing. Go to an ATM, get some cash, come right back, buy your badge, no big deal. But the ATMs at this point in the hotel were already empty, so they had to cross the street, go to a bank, pull out some money from there, from ATMs that did have money, then come all the way back and get their badges. But it all turned out okay, we all got our badges. Going back to the detail where, uh, people who worked at the convention weren't wearing masks. Um, at the panelist check-in desk, <laughs> I was going to grab my badge, and there's this guy sitting at the table. He has a mask on, right? Great. But it's under here. And like, it made my skin crawl because I literally watched him do like this, and then he picked up a badge and handed it to somebody. And I was like, whoo! Oh! And then it gets better, because there's a woman sitting next to him working the same booth. And the woman, was wearing a face shield for like a minute, I think, but then it disappeared all of a sudden. Like I looked away and I looked back and then the sh her face shield was off and it never came back. So I think she gave up on the face shield. So then she was just wearing nothing on her face to protect anyone. Fast forward, uh, we are getting ready for the skit contest. So this is when things start finally, you know, getting a little less stressful and a little more fun. Um, it was me, Aza, Crow, Kara, and another dear friend of mine. 
um, and we all got together. I choreographed a skit slash dance kind of like performance and we got together and it was about security breach, obviously, as you can probably see. I'll pop up some videos of rehearsals we did in our front yard. And then, you know, it, it's like this really cool, like, storyline. Very basic and very simple, but it was really fun to put together for, like, a, a dance slash skit. And it actually came out very, very, very well. And I'm grateful for all the people that participated. If it weren't for them, it wouldn't have come together as beautifully as it did. It looked amazing. We practiced once a week for, like, a full month or sometimes even twice a week. We made these costumes, um, especially the Moondrop and Sunrise, those costumes were a nightmare to make. Me, Ozza, and Crow kind of put our blood, sweat, and tears into those cosplays. Several things went wrong last minute and we had to kind of patch them up. But they turned out pretty decently. Um, they looked great on stage, so I was so happy. Uh, we went first in the lineup because no one else would volunteer, so we were like, sure, we'll go. <laughs> So we went first in the show lineup. I think there were six performances total. Honestly, it was one of our best runs we had ever done. Entry number one, we got Security Breach. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Plex, where fantasy and fun come to life. Come one, come all, to our state-of-the-art establishment where there's plenty of fun to go around. Bring your friends, bring your children, Bring your safety and our number one priority, and above all, security is the best in town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alert! All security systems have been breached. We got off stage, you know, the, the crowd was cheering, they were so excited and hyped, so you know, the energy was so great, so fun. And then the other performances, um, I may or may not show them, if there's a copyright issue they might be muted or there might be music over them, but I'll show you some quick clips of other performances that happened because they were all so good too and everyone that performed in the skit contest was so sweet and so nice and so encouraging and supportive of each other. Like, very good vibes. Like, everyone was so sweet. We were all hyping each other up in the wing. Like, we're all gonna do great. Like, happy first con after a pandemic, whoa. Like, you know, it, it, was, it was great. Those people were so nice. But here are some short clips and excerpts from the other performances for you to enjoy.
sexy, ooh, beautiful, ah, uh, and single, ah, uh, doesn't mean I will join your demon lord harem. Sister Lexi, we are just trying to save you. We're totally not trying to sell your soul for TikTok cosplay clout. Yes! And my nunchucks. <laughs> They are made from ethically sourced nuns, available by default. <laughs> that fool never saw it coming. Now we can sell his organs in the vendor's hall. Available at booth 4 2069. <laughs> Dear Okabe, this is your very old friend, Souza. In 2010, I would have been gone for a matter of hours. I'm writing from the year 2000, a decade before I left. I need to tell you that I failed my mission. I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. I should have just gone straight back to 1975 like he wanted, instead of risking everything with a stop in 2010. God, how could I have been so selfish? But yeah, so like everyone did so good. Everyone was super into their performances. You could tell everyone had rehearsed and put their hearts into it. It was so cool to see more performances too because previously the skit contest maybe got like three or four performances sometimes entered. But this time there were six, which is a pretty good number for the skit contest because mostly the focus is usually on the masquerade. But to see more participation in the skit contest was really cool. And then in the end, our group won Best in Show, which is first place, so that was awesome. This year they didn't have a plexiglass um, trophy, which, that's fine. I was kind of hoping I could like collect them, but that's okay. We got some really cute prizes and it was amazing. We got our little paper certificate, which I'm probably gonna like hang on the wall by my office over there, little computer area. But it was so fun. Honestly, all that mattered to me was the fun we had, like rehearsing and putting it together, making the costumes, and then finally being able to perform it on stage. Like the big climax, the big moment, and it was awesome. Third year in a row that a Five Nights at Freddy's category performance wins at an anime J culture convention despite the judges knowing nothing about the game. So I think we did pretty good. It was super uplifting to know that all our hard work kind of paid off. We all did it well. We all had fun. The crowd was into it and we ended up winning first place. So bonus. And then shortly after the skit contest, I kind of walked around as Vanny for a little bit, but I was really hot and sweaty and exhausted and feeling kind of gross because I hadn't eaten yet today. Um, so I ended up changing out to Pit Up Weasel 3.0, which you guys have probably seen pictures of on Instagram or Twitter if you follow me. I made a couple of minor changes. Obviously, I wore a wig so that my ears would stay on throughout the day. And I also threw together a last minute, 10 minute vest to wear because I realized that if I don't have his little like starred vest on, no one's gonna really know that I'm not just like a yellow bunny walking around. But I changed out to Pit of Weasel 3.0 and I was pleasantly surprised at how many people immediately knew who I was, like immediately. Like there were people that like from across the room were like, is that a glitch trap? And I was like, yeah, yeah it is, you know? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, wow, they're like, that's a great cosplay. And I'm like, good, you don't think this is weird? 
Like, people were so supportive of that cosplay and they loved it. Like, I got stopped for pictures every 10 feet. Like, I couldn't just walk because there were like photographers that would stop me for a picture or there were like FNAF fans that would stop me for a picture. Like, it was very interesting. I didn't think that that cosplay would be such a hit or so recognizable, but it was. So cool, I guess. The only questionable thing that happened a couple of times, a few times, when wearing that cosplay is, you know, the whole cosplay is not consent thing being ignored. Because, you know, if you're, if you're wearing anything that shows any kind of skin, especially legs, sometimes people think that is an invitation to be inappropriate. So obviously, and unfortunately, I kind of ran into some odd people that day. A couple of weird people had a couple of stalkers throughout the day, so that wasn't fun. But, you know, besides, <laughs> besides that, it was fun! I liked walking around in that cosplay because it was comfortable too. Surprisingly, that cosplay was comfortable to walk around in. Ten times more comfortable to walk around than, like, being in Vanny. Because Vanny was a bunch of layers, it was hot, it was kind of sticky, because, you know, you start sweating and it's really gross. So we went to the Cornish Pasty, had some good food, it was very nice. Um, and then we went back to the convention to start getting ready for the panel. And the panel that we had was Security breach, again, that was kind of my theme for the day. And uh, it was at 10 p.m. at night, so kind of a late slot, so I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna turn out because usually when we have later time slots, less people tend to show up and it's kind of dead, so it's more just like a casual panel, which is fine, because honestly, by that time of the day, we're all exhausted anyway. Like, I expected maybe like four people to show up, but we actually had like, probably 10 or 15 people show up, which doesn't sound like a lot for an entire panel room, but they were all like into it. So it was like a good energy. It was a good vibe. Like everyone was into it. Everyone was like asking questions, talking about theories, wondering about the future of Five Nights at Freddy's, like cool stuff like that. Um, and then obviously me and, me and my uh, purple guy pal over there were, uh, bantering quite a bit as Vanny and William, so that was fun. We got to make fun of each other. Uh, I kept flipping his hat off of his head. <laughs> so that was funny. I don't know if anyone kept count of how many times I did it, but I did it a lot. One of the people in the audience recommended that I play a Five Nights at Freddy's game, so I did, and it happened to be Five Nights at Freddy's 1 on night 5, which I hadn't played in years, so it was a bit difficult, <laughs> especially since I didn't have a mouse, so I was using my little laptop touchpad, so that was challenging. But it was really fun, like the energy was good, like we were all tired, but it was still, we managed to keep the energy alive and the panel alive, and the transitions between events and, you know, like, games we played were very smooth, we had a Kahoot at the end, and we gave away some free artwork prizes, because we do that every panel we have. So yeah, it was a really successful panel, everyone had fun, and it was really nice. It was a good way to finish off the night, so in the end, I think it was a really fun day. It was a good first experience to be back at a convention after, you know, like two years of not having one, or at least over a year of not having one. So I kind of, I missed, I missed the vibe of being at a con. And then Phoenix Fan Fusion is coming up in January, so we do plan on going to that. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically the story. If you enjoyed me telling you about my journey to Sabaton 2021, please like this video, maybe share it with your friends. Thank you, Timmy, for the input. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, remember, stay bright, because you are a star, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. That's not, that's not how the door works. I've tried telling you so many times. And you just, you just don't, you don't get it.